Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. Got a cool little thing to unbox today. It's right here, or I don't even know if you can call this unbox. Take it off the card, I guess. This is the Korg Monotron Duo, and I got this at KnobCon a couple weeks back. Um, cool little synth, and if Monotron sounds familiar to you, it might be because you've seen this in a lot of my videos. This is the Monotron Delay. And you may have even seen this in a couple of my videos. This is actually called the Monotron. And in fact, not too long ago, I did a video where I sort of did a shootout between these two. And I'll link that in the description if you haven't seen it and you want to check it out. But now I have the third Monotron in the series. There are three of them. The original Monotron, the Monotron Delay, and the Monotron Duo. So I'm going to get this box open and let's uh, take a look at this thing and kind of compare it to the other two. All right, so first things first, let's get this uh, package open. So it's just kind of a blister pack, but it looks like it might actually come apart. There we go, it actually came apart fairly easy. Some of these blister packs are really difficult to get open. But so here we go, we've got the manual right here. I'll set that off to the side for a second. We've got this sort of card here, and then we've got some batteries, and of course, we've got our Monotron unit, and that, is pretty much it. So let's take a real quick look at the controls. Like the other Monotrons, we've got a standby switch that kind of changes between the modes. So we have standby, VCO mode one, and, VC and VCO mode one plus two. Um, you see there's two different VCO pitches here, and then there's a mod amount. So I'm gonna assume you can have them cross modulate or work as two individual VCOs. We've got a VCF uh, cutoff and resonance right here. And then we've got our little ribbon keyboard speaker up in the corner. Same thing as the others, we've got an, uh, an aux in jack and an output jack, and a volume knob right here. So, very familiar to the other Monotrons. Let's take a look at the three of them. Okay, folks, so here we have all three Monotrons. We're gonna take a look at the Duo first. And as I mentioned before, we've got three positions here. We've got standby, which is off. We've got VCO1, and then we've got VCO1 plus two. Talk more about what that does in just a second. Like the other Monotrons, we've got a built-in speaker here. So if I hit this button, you can hear it, but of course that's probably not very easy to hear, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into the speakers. Okay, so there you go. So one thing to note about this one, since it does have pitch tracking here and you can adjust how, you know, what you want the pitch range to be, this keyboard does track to about a normal keyboard. So it is about an octave, you know, as you look at the, um, the keys here, whereas the monotone delay does not track at all. What we've got here is we've got VCO1 and VCO2. Right now we're in VCO1 mode, which means when I hear this, we're, when I hit this, we're just hearing VCO1. So if I turn this, we shouldn't really hear anything. When I turn VCO2, we don't really hear anything go different, okay? Now if I go to both mode, then when I hit it, we hear two VCOs. So as I turn this one now, We hear both VCOs, and of course, we can tune them to some sort of a pleasing interval, or we can make them really dissonant, because we just have control over both of them, right? So we can pick anything that we want there. Now, in between them, we have this cross modulation. So what happens is as you turn this up, VCO1's frequency is going to affect VCO2, and consequently, VCO2's frequency, VCO frequency is going to affect VCO1. Let's take a listen. And then of course, if we tweak them now, we'll get all kinds of weird effects because they're modulating each other. Of course, we can go really high with this one and really low with this one, or vice versa. And then we can adjust the amount of cross modulation if it's too intense. Okay, so we can do a lot with that. Now, if we go to VCO1 mode and we have the cross modulation dialed up, we'll still hear the cross modulation, but we don't hear VCO2. So now, it affects VCO1, so it's still affecting VCO1, but we don't hear it. Whereas we go to here, now we hear both of them. Back to VCO1. We hear the effect, but not the VCO. And then of course we've got a filter, and it has cutoff, or excuse me, it has a resonance.
So there's some of the things you can do with the Monotron Duo. So let's take a look at the original Monotron here, and it's actually pretty similar to the Monotron Duo, except for instead of having two VCOs, it's got a VCO and an LFO, and then it has an intensity of which the LFO can be used to modulate whatever. So depending on which position you have this switch in, it can modulate either the pitch or the cutoff. Okay, so I set this switch to pitch, and then if I turn the intensity up, we should hear this LFO affect the pitch. There we go. Of course, I can change the speed of the LFO. And then we can do the same thing with the filter cutoff. Now if I turn the intensity all the way down, but if I turn that up, we should hear it modulate the filter cutoff. And of course, again, we can change the rate. So there you go. So that's kind of how the original Monotron works. And that brings us to the Monotron Delay. Now on the Monotron Delay, we have two different waves to choose from. So we've got the standby position. If we go to here, and you also notice this one has a yellowish green LED instead of red on the other two. But as we, um, this is the triangle, so, and this one's the square. So hopefully you can hear a little bit of difference there. Now with this one, we just have a, um, we have an LFO and we have an oscillator, but we don't have a pitch control for the oscillator. So this one does not track anything close to a keyboard because there's no pitch control. So you just kind of get what you get with this one. Um, but what you can do is you can turn up the, uh, the LFO intensity here and you can get pitch modulation happening. So it will do pitch modulation like the original Monotron. And it does have a filter like the other two, but in this filter, you don't have control of resonance. So you can filter out some frequencies, but you don't have that resonance control. However, it adds a delay. To get you all kinds of new effects. And this delay is very lo-fi. So you get all kinds of weird glitchy craziness. So there's the Monotron delay. So which one is right for you? Well, maybe one of them, maybe all of them, maybe two of them. I don't know. It really depends on what you want to do. If you're looking to have control over resonance, then this one is out because you don't have a resonance control where you do on the other two. If you're looking for cross modulation, you're probably going to get more cross modulation options with this one than you are with this one. However, your cross modulation on this one is going to be locked to pitch, whereas here you can do filter modulation. So if you're looking for filter modulation, this might be your baby here. Now, of course, if you want that lo-fi crazy delay, then this is your only choice. So it just really depends on what you're looking for. But all of them have an audio in jack, so you can also use them to process audio. So you can send audio through the filter on either one of these or through the filter and the delay on this, which is actually very nice. I have a separate video where I did some examples of what you can do with the Monotron delay. All really useful, all fairly inexpensive, and all a heck of a lot of fun. Hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up.